Okay, let's take a wee walk in. Second most expensive hotel to be built in Las Vegas. Can you guess what the, the most expensive is? It's not Circus Circus, that's old school. We're going to go across here and do a video in a wee minute as well. Uh, right down the strip there, we've got obviously Encore at the wind. Further on, the wind, the Venetian, Treasure Island in the distance. So this is at the kind of far end. I've done a video on the Hilton Grand Vacations. And I basically said, for me, this is a cut-off point on the strip. I wouldn't go any further than round about here. I was up at the Strat earlier on. It's not the best area, and there's nothing much up there apart from the Strat and the Sahara. This hotel has took many, many years to build. But I'm telling you, it is one of the nicest that I've been in. It's different than the other hotels I've been in in Las Vegas. You'll see what I mean once we get in here. Um, it's a massive complex. I'll let you know in a minute how many rooms do you think it's got. Quite a lot. I did check it out for tonight. £200 per night, including resort fee. You can get it for about £140. My American viewers just translate that into dollars. Um, at the weekend, but you could be as much as three or four hundred pounds to stay in this hotel. Um, it is a classy looking hotel. Let's go through. Opened the door the wrong way there. Now you're going to notice something when we go in here, you see my reflection in the mirror there. What's the first thing that strikes you when you go in here? It's so different than every other casino I walk in. All this open space right at the front. This has obviously been done on purpose to make it different from other casinos. You could argue it is a waste of retail space. They could bring the gaming machines forward or bring a bar forward. I don't know. What's your thoughts on it? It does make it different than other places. They've got lots of shops in here, I think, on the second floor. I've not even been up the second floor yet. We'll go up there in a wee minute. Uh, let me show you one of the nicest sports books that I've been in in Las Vegas. And we'll give you some information on this hotel. Um, it does feel a lot bigger than quite a lot of the other hotels that I've been in. The casino, I've seen in other reviews online, etc. People are saying they're not 100% sure of the casino and it doesn't doesn't ever seem that busy. That might well be because it's just such a big property. I'm not 100% sure. Let me tell you how many slot machines I've got, viewers. Can you guess? Hold on to get my glasses on to read my notes. Right, we're going to go into the sports book here. Uh, we've got a theatre. They're trying to focus on bringing revenue in from other things like shops and shows apart from just relying on casino revenue. So they're doing things a bit different here. It took them a long time to build this hotel. It was first, I think, agreed in 2005 and then there was various stuff going on. Let me show you this place in here. It's absolutely beautiful. Sports book. More of a high-end feel to it. And uh, you've, got, you've got a lot of food going on here, a lot of dining. Look how busy it is. Beautiful bar as well. I've not had a beer in here, so I can't tell you how much it is. Uh, we've got wee private areas in there, by the looks of it as well. We're going to show you this. Now, I'm staying at the Westgate tonight, which is not as nice as this hotel, but the sports book, the West book, uh, the Westgate, not the West book, is amazing. The sports book. This is a very, very good sports book as well, but. Lots of screens, lots of things going on here. Uh, not as many seats down the front as some other sports books, but you can see it's just top quality. The vibes in here are nice. It's a nice, nice place. Uh, let's continue. Let me know in the comments, have you stayed in this hotel? What do you think of the location? It's a wee bit far up the strip for me, but I would still consider staying as far up as here. No problem. Right, let's continue. So that is called the Tavern, advertising obviously the UFC, which is on tonight. Um, we look at the menu, I think, hopefully. It's open to 11 o'clock, but Friday and Saturday, up to 1 a.m. They did have the menu up there, but it's disappeared. We'll come back to that, maybe. These things always happen, I'm about to show you things, okay. Papi Steak, the theatre, L2 shopping as well, lots of stuff going on here. Stretches all the way back here, it's absolutely massive. This is called the Solo Club. 
again it's got more of a high end feel to it beautiful bar at the end there quite a few people playing there as well nice in there let's continue out here now if you're a big roller you want to speak to your casino host and they've got a dedicated room there so that's trying to attract obviously some big rollers um, as well but this is the type of place I'd imagine it would attract people like that um, look how nice it is over here wait till I show you this absolutely stunning beautiful in the middle the bar there wait till I show you it probably won't be able to show you the pool here I don't think but uh, I'll show you everywhere else 173,000 square feet this property Sixty-seven stories. I think officially it's the tallest building in Las Vegas now. I think it's bigger than the Strat. The Strat obviously has got the observation tower up the top. This, as far as I know, doesn't have this. Maybe it does have a rooftop bar. Probably a mistake if it didn't. Look how nice this bar is. I'm scared to ask how much a drink would be in here, mind you, but it's, it's very busy vibe. I mean, I read a lot of reviews saying this place was empty. It doesn't seem this way to me. Obviously, I'm filming this at the weekend. Uh, it's got a shopping centre feel about it, which some people won't like. If you're a Vegas traditionalist, you maybe don't like this, but I think it's good to have somewhere different. We will head up there and I'll show you some of the shops probably. Let's head down this way as well. Conference centre down here and a Kena Club, I don't even know what that is. A Kena Club. So there's a few people in here with mobility scooters, so the good news is if you get any mobility issues, they are allowing scooters in here as well. Has got a brand new feel about it. Opened, uh, I think it opened in 2023, is it December? It cost 3.7 billion to build this property and it went through various legal issues, uh, people were suing each other and filing for bankruptcy and stuff like that, obviously it started in 2005, and then it was going to be called The Drew when it was taken over um, but that didn't materialise, it changed name again and quite an interesting fact, I was reading about it is when they were building it it was 70% built in 2009 and also, what's this up here also when the owners who owned it at that point, we're going to call it the Drew. Some guy broke into the property and set a fire that caused $10 million worth of damages. So, <laughs> a bit of bad luck there, wasn't it? So this be a restaurant here as well, maybe open later on tonight. It was absolutely beautiful inside. All day brunch. Smoothies. $12 for soup. And there's your mains there as well. Cheeseburgers, $26. Now, uh, you won't believe this, but for this type of hotel, for what I've seen in other hotels in Vegas, that is not outrageous. That's not that bad. It does look really nice in there. Look at the different world clocks I've got there. All the times around the world. I'm still getting used to this. been eight hours behind the UK. Um, you do forget. What's this in here? Know where this is in here? Restaurant. Nice in here as well, eh? One place is nicer than the other. High limit room here as well. Okay, so this is a club. I don't know whether it's like a private dining restaurant or something. They're showing obviously food there. And this is the room for the high limit gamblers, which looks absolute classy. Obviously, I've got my shorts and t-shirt on and with the camera, I won't be getting right in here, but it looks absolutely beautiful in here. Chandeliers and the lighting, absolutely stunning. Um, so all the high rollers are basically in here. TVs at the back as well, beautiful. 
very very nice hotel we're going to head upstairs if you're new to the channel do me a favour it does not cost a penny hit the subscribe button it's absolutely free um, don't miss any videos in Vegas basically I'm going to have quite a lot coming out from Vegas I might go through your favourite hotel and show that as well I probably will to be honest with you so make sure that you check that out as well more high limit slots here I think 1948 this hotel was originally called the Thunderbird Hotel and then it changed to the Silverbird and the El Rancho and then obviously it's been built upon from that as well so it's been a bit of an ongoing saga building this and I think the locals were getting a bit fed up with everything going on but now they've finished it will it survive? to me it looks a really nice property um, have they made some mistakes? don't know yet it's hard to tell um, that big bit at the start makes it different and it has got a wee bit of a shopping mall feel to it with all the elevators upstairs we're going to head upstairs and we'll see what it's like um, up there as well ok let's head upstairs ok I'm upstairs now um, in the Fontainebleau absolutely stunning views up here you can see how nice that bar is down there very very nice accommodation head round there in a wee second so I'm not 100% sure really what's on this level it's a massive hotel uh, I can't remember if I told you, I think it's got nearly 3,700 rooms so there's not many bigger than that in Las Vegas I need to check what the MGM's got actually because that used to be the biggest hotel in the world, the MGM but uh, since been overtaken Theatre, Conference Centre, Komodo, and Pappy Steak more stuff down there as well, such a big property Opening soon, the Webster, I don't know what that's going to be. So we've got, looks like we've got quite a few shops up here as well, some really good designer shops. Um, there was more shops uh, due to opening here, but I think they're in the process of just getting more people in. There's another one coming here, Santa Maria something. Missoni on the, right, the left hand side there. For my UK viewers, there's no pound shops in here. Americans, there's no dollar shops in here. Okay, this is something that's interesting. They're building a sports memorabilia museum, I think, here. And they've already secured some items from Tom Brady and uh, other really top American sports stars. So that'll be a good attraction once it comes. It's going to be called the Hall of Excellence. Tom Brady's actually involved in it, he's, he's not just donating stuff, he's actually got a stake in it. Um, okay, it's getting nicer here, look at this. Wow. More things opening soon here, a tasting room is opening here soon. Katina Conrama. Check out this bar. Beautiful Komodo over there. So I think this is the food court actually, but it's an upmarket food court. I've done quite a lot of videos on all the hotels here in Las Vegas. I hope you're enjoying them. They're all very. If you'd have seen the food court down at, uh, I always call it Bally's. I still call it Bally's. It's now the horseshoe. The horseshoe. The food court there on the way to there is quite run down, quite old fashioned. Um, this is just modern, doesn't really feel like a food court, feels like more of a restaurant feel to it, uh, again but you'll pay accordingly, I doubt there's a subway here like there is in the horseshoe, <laughs> but it's really really nice, restrooms up there on the left hand side, first thing you find in a, in a casino when you go in is the restroom, they're always hard to find. Capons, specialising in burgers I think. And then we've got Roadside Taco over here, name speaks for itself. Miami Slice, which I'm assuming is a pizza place with that name. Roadside Tacos, scan to order the QR code, or you can probably go up and order it as well. Bacon Egg Burritos, $14. Chicken Tacos, $6. That seems not bad, does it not? $6 at beef. 
Barrier, I think it's called, $8. Hot Chicken Taco, $9. Seems pretty reasonable for here. Frozen Cocktails, oh, $18. Beers are $10. Prices are crazy in Vegas. For this standard of hotel, that's not outrageous for a beer. Although we are in the food court, mind you. Miami Slice, which is definitely a pizza place because I've just seen somebody coming out with the pizza box there. Okay, check this out. So you can properly see what they're cooking here, eh? Komodo. This place looks nice inside. Check it out. The dark. Oh, it looks beautiful. Got my glasses on again, viewers. Small plates there, but what's the prices here? Got my glasses on. Thai beef jerky, $29. Stuff you can share for the table as well. Oh, Maine Lobster as well, $75. Peking Duck, $150. Prime Steak, $74 to $92. Japanese Wagyu. Oh, some interesting things there, viewers, eh? You will need a wee, a wee budget to come in this hotel. If you're, if you're staying in this hotel, I'm assuming you've already got the budget for it anyway. Let's head round to the other side, see what's here. Okay, it's still in the Fontaine Blue and just figuring out where to go here. There is more shops coming down here. Uh, I can see they're advertising, some acts coming up here, the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, there was another guy advertised a minute ago that's quite famous in America as well, Country Western I think he was. So there's a lot of things going on here. I don't think the pool might be around about here, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let's have you wander down here and see what we can see. More kind of high-end shops down here as well. Very, very big complex, but unusually on different floors. So compare, compare it to like so the MGM Grand, which is a massive complex, but more or less everything's on the same floor as far as I remember. See, you can get through that way to the promenade, which surprised me because we're actually on the second floor here. We've got more, obviously, steps here. Yeah, I think I've got lost. <laughs> 